Welcome back to Unit 3 of our last week. In the last unit, we had a look how the system does support an accountant when performing financial closing activities. Now, let's assume the financial closing activities are finished and we want to serve our external stakeholders with relevant information. What are reporting structures and what are they used for? General ledger accounts are structured in the chart of accounts on the basis of their account number. For financial reporting requirements, this structure is not sufficient. Therefore, you can use financial reporting structures to group general ledger accounts in another way and in another order. Reporting structures form the basis for creating different financial statements. For example, you need a different reporting structure for each of your balance sheets, income statements and cash flow statements. You can use several hierarchical levels in a reporting structure and you need to assign it to one particular chart of accounts. When you add a new general ledger account to a certain chart of accounts, you also need to add it to all relevant reporting structures based on this chart of accounts. Some structure types contain fixed structure items which provide certain calculations such as totals or balances. A balance sheet, for example, always contains assets, liabilities, equity and a balance sheet result. An income statement always contains the profit and loss result. A cash flow statement always contains operating activities, investing activities, financing activities and net increase in cash and cash equivalents. Reporting structures of the structure type income statements by function of expense are not based on general ledger accounts but on functional areas and price components. We will talk about this income statement in more detail on the following slides. An important thing to mention is that SAP Business by Design treats expenses for sales documents as cost of goods sold. The posting logic of such expenses differs if you use revenue recognition or not. Pooja already explained in Unit 1 of Week 2 that if you use reven revenue recognition, the time at which such costs are treated as expenses depends on the revenue recognition method. If you do not defer costs, they are treated directly as expenses. This means that in contrast to the nature of expense method, the function of expense method does not consider changes of inventory. All postings on cost accounts can be grouped by the area of operation where they occurred. These areas of operation are called functional areas in the system. This enables you to create income statements by function of expense as required by many accounting principles like US GAAP or IFRS. In addition, you can perform a detailed analysis of your earned profit. The structure of an earned profit analysis is the same as the structure of an income statement by function of expense. We know now that the system uses functional areas to create income statements by function of expense. But how are these functional areas assigned to postings? In most cases, they are automatically de determined based on configuration settings. The determination rules and their search sequence are described on this slide. The highest priority has a manually entered functional area. This is only possible in manual postings in general ledger, in the so-called journal entry vouchers. This is normally necessary for corrections. The second priority is the determination directly from the general ledger account. The determination by a general ledger account can differentiate depending on the business transaction. In case the postings, posting is created based on a sales object, like a sales order, you can define a different functional area than in case of non-sales objects. As an example, delivery cost based on sales transactions can be assigned to the functional area cost of goods sold. In case delivery cost incurred based on any business transaction independent of sales, they can be assigned to the functional area administration. The third priority is the determination based on a cost center type. If you, you, if you post any expenses on cost center accounting, which has the cost center type administration assigned, the functional area administration will be determined. There are other scenarios possible, like a consumer fair project, which is organized by the cost center marketing. In this case, the assigned cost center type is also marketing and this leads to the functional area marketing. 
If you do not specify a functional area and the system cannot derive one, it uses the default functional area 9900. In case you need to report by segments or profit center because of local or company requirements, the system can support you. Depending on your requirements, you can choose one of three degrees of profit center segment reporting. The first degree, called profit center segment reporting, assigns profit center and segments one-to-one -to, -one to cost, revenue, asset, material and work in process items. In this case, no additional line items are created. This allows you to create income statements and balance sheets with asset, material and work in process items by profit, and profit center and segment. The second de decree, called Profit Center Segment Reporting with Balancing, splits receivables, payables and tax items according to the offset information of Profit Center and Segment. In this case, additional line items are created. This allows you to report on additional balance sheet items, receivables, payables and tax by Profit Center. The third decree, called Profit Center Segment Reporting with Clearing, splits cash according to the offset, receivables, payables information of profit center and segment. The split is done during payment clearing. In this case, also additional line items are created. This allows you to, uh, to create complete balance sheets for your profit centers and segments. The higher the degree of profit center and segment reporting, the more reporting capabilities you have but consider that the additional line items make the journal entries more complex. Based on your decision, if you want to do profit center and segment reporting and to which degree, and additionally if you want to create income statements by function of expense or earn profit analysis, the system activates so-called reporting principles. You need to assign one reporting principle to each of your set of books. You might remember Unit 3 of Week 1, where Carsten explained the set of books. The table gives an overview which reporting principle belongs to which decision. If you are not sure which degree of profit center and segment reporting you will need in future, you can choose reporting principle 1 or 2. The advantage of these reporting principles are higher simplicity, better performance and less required table space than reporting principles of higher degrees of profit center and segment reporting. You can switch to a higher degree later if necessary. If you do not need profit center segment reporting, income statements by function of expense or earn profit analysis, you can choose initial. The advantages of this reporting principle are higher simplici simplicity, better performance and less required table space. Now let's go directly to the system. <coughs> I'm logged on again as Eduard Becker. The first thing I want to show you is the balance sheet. Therefore, we go to the Work Center General Ledger. And under Reports, you will find all reports which are assigned to the Work Center General Ledger. You see in total, we have here, if you see the number on at the right side um, on the bottom, 130 reports available here, quite a lot. So let's search for financial statements. This report contains the balance sheet and also income statement and cash flow statement. Depending on selections, the report is then um, executed. So I created a selection for that already. I will explain you now the selections I did. I selected company 1000, Almica, what we used the whole time, then the set of books 4010, which is the German gap, as you can see here. The fiscal year of last year, because we have in this system um, more postings in the last year, of course, and for all periods. You see now the overview of the balance sheet, um, but this is quite collapsed, so if you want to expand it, you can just use this icon here, click on uh, character characteristic settings, and then say either fully expand or just use any level what you want to see. I just take level 3 right now and then you get more details. So you see the structure as usual for a balance sheet, asset, liabilities, 
below the assets you have um, of course the long-term assets and the current assets and I want to switch now or go to the accounts receivables and other assets and just show you a drill down from the balance sheet here based on the account trade receivables domestic so we have now here this line this is the general ledger account what I can see here and if I open um, my possibilities for reportings to drill down I can choose for example the GL accounts line items then the system will open the new report with the selections based <coughs> on uh, the balance sheet what we saw before and based on the GL account account uh, trade receivables domestic you see that here as well but here also in the selection also the accounting period and year was taken over and a set of books and now we get the full list um, of all postings with debit and credit, the journal entry types belonging to that. Of course you can change here um, the information which is shown here as well um, by adding fields um, but I wanted to show you right now that you can also switch directly from here now to the source document. So for example just take a customer invoice um, you can just open the source document right here and check what happened there. If you click on, we see now that was for the customer Heizung and Sanitaire GmbH in Hannover. Um, if you click on view all, you can also switch to the document flow as you have seen already in the previous uh, weeks and units. And from there you can get, if there was a sales order before, as we have it right now here, um, you can switch to the sales order, the outbound delivery and so on. So that's so far regarding the drill down to up to the source document. <coughs> now I want to show you um, how you can select and as well um, a balance sheet for a different set of books. So let's check IFRS. You have to select a set of books and in addition the financial reporting structure because this is now assigned to the chart of accounts um, for the German gap. Therefore, you don't get any structure here. As you can see, there is no structure behind that. And if I select now the right uh, reporting structure, so the balance sheet for IFRS, which has a different number, as you can see here, um, then I get the structure according to IFRS for my balance sheet. Of course, here's the same true. If I want to go into more details, I can drill down. In addition, you can also select now a profit center or a segment to check now your balance sheet just for one profit center, depending of course on the settings, um, what we have seen before. No? Just wait a moment. Yeah, there we go. Um, <coughs> for example, we just take um, sales of uh, heaters and just execute it. I guess I do a refresh. Let's see. Did it change right now? I did not recognize. No. Um, okay, try it again. Ah, there we go. I don't know what happened before, <laughs> why the system did not recognize my selection, but now we see the balance sheet based on this profit center. Of course you can do that by several profit centers as you saw before as well for profit center group. Um, yeah, These are the se selections here. We have additionals, additional selections based on ad fields but this is something um, I, want, I don't want to go into much detail right now. Another thing I want to show is the income statement. Th therefore I also created a selection so now the system just changes from the balance sheet to the structure of the income statement. You see that at the top as well. Also here we have a result from ordinary uh, operations. This is now the in income statement by uh, the German gap. Uh, sorry, by nature of expense. <laughs> and uh, in addition we can also, if we use the different uh, reporting structure here, this is now set the 11 it's on, based on German gap, but also nature of expense. 
Um, if I want to see it now by function of expense, I can just select a different structure type and then I get a different structure by function of expense. Also here a drill down is possible and you see the lowest level is here not a general ledger account but as explained on the slides before the income statement by function of expense is structured by a functional area and therefore you see here the functional area sales. That's it so far for the system demo. Let's go back to the slides. So what are the key learnings of this unit? The built-in analytics in SAP Business by Design enable a drill down up to the source document. Based on the parallel accounting functionality, you can create financial statements that comply with appropriate accounting principles. The system uses the function of expense method, which means that expenses for sales documents are treated as cost of goods sold. Together with the structure of an income statement by functional areas, this supports you to create income statements by function of expense, which is often required by accounting principles. Profit center and segment reporting is supported. If you want to use it, you must choose one of three degrees of profit center and segment reporting. In our last unit, we will see how the system supports you to serve your internal stakeholders. Thanks for your attention and hope to see you again. Bye.